In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Chaos Tackle Medusa, the different sizes of it, how to tune it, and some different alterations you can make to fish it better. What's going on everybody? My name's Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy. Today's video is less entertainment, more education. Uh, most of my videos are just straight up fishing videos, but this time of year, musky fishing is a little hard to come by. In fact, in southern Wisconsin, just about any type of fishing can be hard to come by because the ice is leaving. I mean, I could go chase walleyes, but I might have to resort to that. But uh, what I want to take a look at is the Chaos Tackle Medusa, and this will apply to all rubber baits, toads, bulldogs, any of that stuff. But I'm going to focus on the Medusa, and we're going to take a look at how to tune the baits if they're not running right, different ways to weight the baits, and just the different styles of Medusas, and maybe a little bit of when I would use them. All right, first off, most of you probably know what a Medusa is, but if you don't, well, this is a very little one, but it is a three-tailed rubber bait, typically used for muskies. This little guy could be pike or bass or whatever, but this is the Micro Medusa. A size up from that is the Mini. Next size up from that is the Mid. Those are the three small ones. Now we're getting into the bigger ones. This is a regular. The Husky, now we're getting into some serious stuff. The Monster, the big old Monster Medusa, which I like my shoulders and I don't throw it that much. But um, I know Robbie uh, from Today's Angler and Michael Hansen, they've been crushing fish throwing these bigger baits, so I'm going to have to man up, I think, and start chucking some of these things in the weeds. But that's for another video. Let's keep going on to um, a different types of them. We looked at the sizes. There is a different type of Medusa. The other type of Medusa I'm referring to, of course, is a shallow Medusa. A shallow Medusa will have a little hole punched right up here in the back fin to show you that it is, in fact, a shallow Medusa. So the big difference with the shallow Medusa is not really the amount of weight the difference is actually in where the weight is on the harness inside of the bait. So the, the weight difference is only maybe a quarter of an ounce, but the weight is shifted back on this harness in here internally so that it keeps the nose up a little bit. So instead of diving, the bait stays a little bit more level. So that's what helps to make it a shallow medusa. Now the shallow medusas only come in mid regular husky and monster. So no shallow mini, no shallow micro. Those baits are already small and light enough that you can keep them high enough up in the water column that it doesn't really have a use to have a shallow version of it. Before we get into tuning a Medusa, and as long as we were talking about the shallow Medusa, one cool thing about the shallow is that if you do buy it and you don't like the way it runs, or maybe you've got a bait that is twisting or turning a little bit, Chaos Tackle does make these little weights it's called a deep threat weight. Get my face out of the way so it'll focus on it. This is the one and a half ounce size. This is an ounce. There's a smaller one that's a half ounce. So those are the three sizes of the deep threat weights. So what I was saying is, if you do have use for a shallow Medusa, but you want to turn it into sort of a regular Medusa, all you have to do, and you can see it on this mid that I've got here, I've got one of the one ounce weights. You simply take the hook off that front hook hanger, pop the weight on there, the slot slides right over it, put the hook back on and you're ready to go. Another cool thing you can do if you don't want to do that is just place it over the front eye here and you can actually take your leader and put your snap through there and now you've got that weight in the front. I like having these deep threat weights even on regular weighted medusas because it gives it more of a hopping motion because it pulls that head down that little bit extra weight. So something to consider, it's a little bit different way to make the medusa run. If you really wanted to fish one deep, you could put weights on all three spots on one of these. So uh, the deep threat weights are a really cool way to customize the way your Medusa is weighted and the way that it fishes. Let's get into how to tune a Medusa. For the most part, most Medusas will come out of the package or if you're at a show and you buy it off of the rack, most of them are gonna fish just fine without too much monkeying around. But if you do have one that wants to roll or goes to one side or the other, there are a few things you can do. Let's say you have a Medusa that is constantly pulling to one side. 
a really easy way to fix that. It's just like tuning a crankbait. So on a crankbait or a diving riser or anything that's got a, a front kind of a nose ring, you would take that nose ring and bend it the direction that you want the bait to go. So if it's going this way, you take that nose ring and you bend it a little bit this way. And you keep tweaking it and, and making little pitches back behind the boat to see once you hit that sweet spot. Same goes for Medusa, except instead of just changing the eye point here, what you can do, because that harness, like this harness runs pretty much the length of the body, you can grab it and actually twist the head of the Medusa, twist that metal harness in here, and just start kind of bending the Medusa until you get it to run nice and straight. The other thing that you can try and do and I know a lot of guys do, is actually give the bait a little bit of a, a bow, and that seems to help it run a little bit better. Now, sometimes you just get a bait that does not want to behave. Um, for the most part, you can get these to do what you want them to do with a little bit of tweaking. One other thing you can do is if your bait has been stored in a Plano tackle box, you know, the best way to store them is hanging like this. Um, but if they're kind of mashed into a tackle box, sometimes one of these fins will permanently get, get bent up and that can affect the way the bait runs. You can dip these into a little bit of boiling water. I wouldn't do it for more than about 15 seconds. Dip them in there. That'll soften up the plastic, hang them like that. Hopefully that will help to straighten them out a little bit and you'll be back to having a nice running Medusa. Another thing I wanted to touch base on is how to make repairs to a Medusa, especially out in the field. If you've got a bait that is really working and it just has been chewed up beyond, well, I'd not say beyond repair, but beyond being able to fish it without repairing it, then you want to be able to do that as fast as you can. And I will go over one of the ways to do that. So, if you can see here, we've got a little gap there. Not terrible, but if it was something a little bit deeper that I wanted to fix, I found the best thing to do is get yourself a cheap butter knife. Come on, baby. There we go. And one of these little torches and get the tip of the knife nice and hot. And you can spread open that little gap there stick that hot knife in there and then press it together. That hot knife is going to melt the plastic right in that little spot, push it together, hold it, maybe dunk it in the water. If you get some cold water on it really quick, it'll, it'll harden it right up and that's the best way to fix it. If you've lost a tail um, and managed to, or maybe say there's, there's a really bad gash in the tail, same thing. Uh, this works better if you have a buddy, if you're holding either side of, of the rip, Get that knife hot, stick it right between it, push the pieces together, have the buddy pull the knife out and just hold it, dunk it in the water, and these things will be fixed up right as rain. If you do get a Medusa that really, really gets chewed up and it is beyond repair, save the tails. I've got, I know lots of guys that have Frankenstein Medusas that have the tails that they didn't come with, but uh, if you get ones chewed up, save those tails because they can come in handy later. There are a few other alterations you can make. I've seen guys take little micro and mini medusas and put a spinnerbait arm and turn these into a little spinnerbait. You of course have double and single blade attachments, little small attachments you can put in front and fish it more like a bucktail where it's just a cast out and retrieve it. For the most part when I'm fishing a medusa I'm just ripping it forward picking up the slack. You want to keep that line tight as you're picking up the slack every time you pop forward because when you pop it forward and you're bringing that slack up, that's usually when a fish is going to hit. So if you're new to fishing rubber, you definitely want to have a reel that is able to pick up line nice and fast. And that's where you're going to get most of your hits is when you're picking that line up, you're going to feel a thump or a tick and you need to set the hook like your life depends on it because this rubber bait gets stuck in the fish's teeth and you need something that a, a rod that's going to move the bait enough that lets these hooks find a place in the fish's mouth to hook into. You can't sally these guys. You really have to hit it hard. So make sure you have a nice heavy action rod that can do that for you. I would recommend a Chaos Tackle Shock and Awe or the Moab. Shock and Awe is X, double extra heavy and the Moab is triple X heavy. So those would be the two rods that I would be using for 
any of the mid to monster size medusas. The smaller ones you can get away with throwing on smaller rod and reel combos. I hope this was helpful everyone. Even if you've been fishing with a medusa for a while, hopefully there was something out of this video that you picked up on. If you're new to this and you have other questions that this didn't cover, please leave them in the comments below. I will respond as best I can and try to help you out. And if somebody out there has a tip that I may have missed, and I'm sure I probably did, leave that in the comments as well and uh, we'll take a look at that and everybody can hopefully learn from the video and then whatever's in the comments. All right folks, that's what I've got this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I will hopefully be getting out fishing soon. It's starting to warm up here in southern Wisconsin. I've got trips to Iowa, Canada. I, I, there, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening in the summer, but imminently the spring <laughs> I need to find something to do. So hopefully I can get out, catch some fish, and make some more fishing videos for you to enjoy. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you on the next one.